Neurons resemble trees. They have complicated branched shapes. And the total length of all those branches inside your skull is about a million miles. That gives you an idea of how complex the brain actually is. A connectome is a complete map of the connections between all the neurons in your brain. And everyone's connectome is unique, and one of the big hypotheses that we are testing is that I am my connectome. That my memories, my personality, all these aspects of my identity are somehow encoded uh, in the pattern of connections between my neurons. Genomes are one-dimensional sequences, much like books, but a connectome is more like a network. So it's not a simple one-dimensional object, it's a tangled up web uh, like the internet. One of the major slogans of this book is that you are more than your genes. You are your connectome. Everyone knows about the power of the genes to influence your destiny, the way you look, how tall you are, what diseases you might get. But intuitively, people also grasp that's not all there is to it. Your memory of your first kiss, that's not in your genome, because your genome hasn't changed since you were born. Somehow that memory is inside your brain. And where is that? It might be in your connectome, the pattern of connections between your brain's neurons. What can we hope to learn? What can we hope to achieve? Some progress is being made in Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease because we know in those cases that neurons degenerate and die. There's clear evidence that something is going wrong in the brain. But most mental disorders, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, if you look at the brains of these people, they look totally normal. And so, in my opinion, you have to see what's abnormal to have a chance of really treating it or even curing it. And that's what uh, studying connectomes is all about. Much of neuroscience is about promise. If you come to us for practical answers about how to live your life, we may not give satisfying ones. But we believe strongly that we will have those answers, that science will progress. And I'd like to have people understand the quest that we're on and actually join in that quest to understand ourselves and to have the means to change ourselves for the better. So when I first started out studying neuroscience, I was driven purely by curiosity. The Greek philosopher said, know thyself. And neuroscience is about knowing yourself. But now I, and I think much of the neuroscience community has also thought more about the practical implications. Not just know thyself, but how can I change myself? How can we change the brains of other people? This is really uh, the practical consequence of knowledge about what we are. So the question of change has become much more important in my mind than it used to be. I believe that the quest to know ourselves and to change ourselves is one of the most exciting stories for humanity.